What's going on everyone? Seth Miranda here for Adorama TV here in my studio in New York. And uh, I have the new Sigma 105 F2.8 DGDN Art Series Macro Lens, which is pretty awesome. This is the second macro lens in the Art Series line from Sigma, the first one being a 70 millimeter, this being a 105.28. It is available for Sony E-mount, which is why I'm gonna borrow this A7R4 for today, but it's also available for the L-mount, obviously, Sigma, Leica, Panasonic, Lumix. So if you're in any of these systems, this might be for you. Uh, but let's go over this thing, because there's a lot to talk about here, and you know, a macro lens has a lot of features to it that some other lenses might not have. So let's, especially this one. So let's talk about this. First of all, we have an actual aperture ring at the base of the lens. We don't really see that too much these days, but what's really cool about it is underneath the aperture ring is you have this little switch. Now this switch allows it to be a really smooth transition between your f-stops or click it in and it clicks in your f-stops, which is great. So you can be a filmmaker and have a nice smooth iris opening or close, or you could be a stills photographer and click it into place so you know it's there while you're shooting. It doesn't slip on you in the process of shooting and you have under overexposed images. Above that, we have a focus limiter dial, which is fantastic because you can use this for more than just macro, which is close up. We are talking about having three positions here. So I like using 105s and I love using macro lenses for portraiture. Well, when we take it into the first position, that really keeps and minimizes the uh, travel of the autofocus. So there's so much travel and uh, throw for the autofocus and macro lenses as it is to have that real precision, really precise, dead on focus when you're really close and magnified to a subject. But if you're doing portraiture, sometimes it'll go way too long autofocusing because of how much it has to travel and it can slow you down workflow wise. Well, these three positions really help you limit that. You can go into the middle position, which is half a meter to infinity, which is really nice if you're shooting torso up or full body, and it won't be hunting for something that's supposed to be close in front of the lens, because this lens is a macro, and it's designed to actually have a minimum focusing distance of five and a half inches, which is super close up. But if you don't need that, if I'm shooting a portrait, why have it hunt like crazy, right? And of course you have the full setting to have the entire range that it's able to do in autofocus, should you want it. Above that is an autofocus lock, toggle or button, I'm not sure what they're calling it, but this is pretty useful, especially when you're working really close up, everything's magnified, every little shake in your hand shows up, micro adjusting can change a lot when you're that close up to a subject. And above that you have the autofocus, manual focus switch, obviously. This lens is pretty awesome uh, because it has a 62 millimeter front thread. That means that it's a very available filter size. You have a lot of options out there, meaning, different price points, different qualities, and different filters overall. ND filters, polarizers, star filters, black mist, whatever you're into, I'm not gonna judge you, it's your creativity, but you have a very common filter size on the front of this lens at 62 millimeter, which is fantastic. That being said, what will we use this lens for? Well, macro lens, really close up, and I really wanna use for portraiture. So I'm gonna set up three things today with my model Caroline. First one is gonna be macro. Let's get on this gorgeous eyeball that Caroline has and see what we can get to resolve on this A7R4. All right, so this is a 105 macro lens. So what's the first thing I'm gonna try out? Macro, getting close up. And macro really means a one-to-one -one ratio, which is pretty great. It's, uh, it's about able to get us close to our subject. We can abstract our subjects. But I have Caroline right here, and she has amazing steel blue eyes. We shot a lot of videos together, a lot of photos together in general, but we never really did a macro shot of your eye. And I wanted to uh, get really close in there and show the texture of it. So a normal headshot light, something that's just clean and getting tight, wasn't gonna cut it for me. So I'm taking a page out of Daniel Norton's book. And instead of doing that kind of setup, I went with a Profoto B10 with an OCF Magnum reflector on the back, which is a very hard light source, but it's, always, it's also very directional and specular. And that's just what hard light will give you. But what does that mean? Well, specular and hard light emphasizes texture. And that's what I'm getting out of the iris of her amazingly blue eye. But how am I doing that? Well, the light's coming from behind, almost like a rim light, but instead of trying to rim and um, give her shape and edge light her silhouette, we're really just bouncing it into her eye at an angle. And remember, angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. So the angle that light is at is the angle I'm at shooting, and therefore I'm watching the light go in her iris and back out, and that's how we're recording all this amazing texture. You can see it's a very hard light source, and you can do a couple of different things, keep it very cinematic and dark, 
but I also put this Profoto B1X into play, bouncing off the ceiling way, way low down on power just to break the shadows up. So it's not just like a stark contrast of only that light source. We actually have the shadows opening up. So it's not just blitzed highlight skin, a perfectly exposed eyeball and dark dense shadows. Now we have better evenly lit highlight on the skin, really nice exposure on the eye with the texture that we get from the sharpness of this lens and the shadows opened up. So it's not just a, a dense black abyss on our image. You know, this is, you know, you dial it into taste, right? You kind of, do I want my shadows more dense? Do I want them more open up? Well, I give more power to this light. I open those shadows up more. If I want those shadows more dense, I dial it down or I shut it off completely. It's up to me. What was great about this lens though, is it has a focus limiter. When you're really close on a subject, everything's magnetized, especially uh, the movement inside the camera. So if you're hand holding, you'll see the movement shake and really exaggerated. And so is the focusing. If you have all this extra pinpointing little movements you can do with the focus ring, it's that much more precise. And that's what you want in a macro lens, especially if you're doing something like eyeballs or, <laughs> or jewelry or something that's really tight product based. You really wanna have absolute precision control in that focus and you don't have to waste time or have your camera freak out trying to hunt like crazy with the entire range of the autofocus. All right, so setup number two. Uh, I love macro lenses for portraiture and 105 is one of my favorite lenses for portraits depending on my subject and shooting with Caroline. I know I like to use 105 with her, but uh, it also has that focus limiter switch, remember? So I set it to the middle position, which is half meter to infinity. So again, the autofocus isn't hunting along the entire rotation or throw of the autofocus. And we worked pretty relatively quickly with the autofocus here. Um, I did go a little crazy with the lighting here. I mean, let's be honest, I'm using five lights. I have two B1Xs blitzing the back wall, but I also have a, a whole pro photo set up up here with a B2 kit and a B10. This is pretty much Peter Hurley lighting, right? I'm not gonna front, like he does the whole triangle thing. This is my little rendition of it where I, I twist it a little bit more so it's not just pointed directly at Carolina. We sculpt her a little bit. Um, halfway through it though, I do shut off the bottom light to give a lot more definition to the jawline and some cheekbone definition as well. I set up these V flats from V flat world, which were super convenient. And I set them up to the black side. And the reason I did that was I wanted negative fill. Keep in mind, I have a giant white reflector here with all this light ripping into the white and coming back at Caroline. Well, that can eat up some of the texture that's going on in her hair with all the highlight. So when we put the negative fill in here with this blackboard. It'll absorb that residual light and then dense in our shadows where we want them to go and give us more texture in all this amazing hair, right? Well, I have two B1Xs pointed into the wall and they're hitting diagonally, right? So that when we do this, as they fall off in the two circles, they overlap and become even. But we wanna make sure this is stark, stark white, very commercial white. So if we take a meter reading here and a meter reading in front of the light, as long as that light from the wall on the wall reads brighter than the, the key and fill and everything that I'm doing here with the triangle light for Caroline, then I have a white wall. The key here though, to not having any uh, blowback or flare or just crazy fogging happening is you wanna meter the back of your model's head facing the wall and also have enough distance. If this meter reading isn't brighter than the front of her, then I won't have to deal with highlights because if I'm shooting at let's say F11 here, but the, the light coming back from the wall says is F8 here. I'm already shooting at F11, which is a stop away from F8. I don't have to worry about any type of blowback or fogging happening or flare. Pretty much this is headshot lighting with a macro lens. And what macro lens give you for portraiture is one, hyper sharp. And two, even if you close down the aperture, you still get a lens that feels more on a shallow depth of field end of things. It just has that nature to it as a macro lens. So don't just think of this as a close up lens, but it can actually be a pretty great portrait lens and other applications as well. So the art series has been known for some really amazing quality. Let's go try the bokeh out outside or bokeh. I don't care how you say it. You know what I'm talking about. It's every time. 
Uh, but we're going to go on this balcony and we're going to see what the cityscape looks like a little bit out of focus, really pop uh, Caroline off that backdrop. All right, so we're out here on my balcony and I got Caroline safely on some apple boxes, not on the actual ledge. And I just wanted to play around with the shallow depth of field that macro lenses are kind of prone to or actually a nice feature of them, right? So I got all this busy background here and I wanted to shoot a 2.8 and just use a reflector, but Caroline has such light eyes that it actually was bothering her to even keep her eyes open and that's not a good shot. And because I'm using a manual trigger, with my Profoto B10 and a three foot octave box instead of the reflector, I'm not able to do high speed sync. So to handle that background blowing out, I load my ISO to 50 and I close down to 5.0 as my aperture. But even closed down, you can see in these shots that the background's nice and out of focus. She separates off of that background really nicely and it's natural looking. The three foot octave box on this B10 comes from the same direction as the light source. So we're not eliminating the shadows completely and making it look artificial like it's, like it's a CGI background. It's got that natural feel. It's believable because it is real. However, I still wanted to make her pop off of this busy background and that's where the shallow depth of field comes into play. And I think this uh, lens does a great job at that. And you're looking at it right now. In fact, I wanted to pull back because I had all this room to kind of give her a little more of a full body shot, show the shoes a little bit, give her a little bit more to play with as far as posing goes. And I think we got some really nice shots here today, especially with the sunlight backlighting her to make that hair really explode. All right, that's gonna do it for me today with the Sigma 105 F2.8 Art Series macro lens. If you guys have any questions for me about my experience using this lens, give me a comment down below. Don't forget to hit like, share this video around, hit subscribe and the bell for more videos like this. I wanna thank my model, Caroline, and I also wanna thank Sigma for letting me try this thing out. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for me. I will see you next time. Peace.